All right, guys, today we're going to be doing a Sterrett level vial replacement. So let's get to it. All right, everybody, welcome back to the old iron shop. All right, guys, here's all the parts and supplies, tools, and everything we'll need to fix this, uh, this uh, Sterrett 9812 level that I've been uh, trying to work on. Uh, I got some Durham's putty. Normally they call for uh, plaster of Paris. I don't have that, but uh, this will work. And we're going to cut it half and half with flour, which will make it weaker because you want to be able to dig it out. The, the guy who did this the last time used like epoxy, and that was no fun to dig out of there. Anyway, <clears throat> I got the vial here. Here's the part number. You can read that, it's a PT15024. And you can get that on Amazon. I'll put a link down the bottom in the description. Uh, it's about $26 and I think it's even free shipping. So not a bad deal. Anyway, had to order these things here. And these are Teflon springs. And the way it's supposed to work, it's supposed to roll them up and stick them inside of here. And then this piece is supposed to go inside of it. But uh, I tried and tried and tried. And I don't know what the story is here. If this is uh, something slightly different or what. But it will not fit in there. So I kind of found another way. I cut it a little bit shorter. I think we can make it work with less in there. I'm not sure why it's like that. But that's just the problem I'm having. <clears throat> another thing you're going to need is... Uh, some paper to go behind the, the vial. And I bought a piece of, uh, it's like acid-free paper, like archive quality paper from the hobby store. Uh, I got another piece of it right here. And it's got a really nice pattern, but I tried to find one that had the, the least, you know, least color so it wouldn't show through, you know, the way it's nice and white on that side. All right, so the, First thing you're gonna to need to do, you know, if you're working on one of these is you're gonna have a broken vial in here. So you gotta disassemble this whole carrier here. And, you know, it's easy enough to get it off of the base. And what you're gonna to have to do is lock one side probably in a vise or something like that and get a hold of the other side with a pair of pliers or something like that. But try to get something that's gonna protect it, some leather or something like that, work pretty good. Anyway, then you're gonna pull it and one side is always a little tighter than the other, so that side there will come out first. So, when you go to slide this thing off, remember now, there's supposed to be a Teflon spring inside of here, and it's just to give drag to this. This thing spins really free, right? Be careful when you slide this off, you don't drop it and lose them. I guess that's a common problem. I didn't have mine in, it, in this one here because somebody lost them the last time they, they were replacing it. Anyway... Once you got one side out, you know, you don't want to try to grab hold of this. You might crush this, this tube or distort it, and you don't want to do anything like that. So just work at breaking out this vial and find a drill bit or something like that that will just fit inside of here, and you can kind of bore out. Hopefully they're using plaster or something like that, and you can kind of just work that out of there. Uh, use a punch maybe at the very end, knock out the bottom of the vial. That should work. That's what happened, what I did. Uh, once you got it out, then you can, if you can't get a hold of this and pull it out, you could use a punch and just slide a punch all the way through, you know, and just, just tap it out and it should come out without too much trouble. So that's how that's assembled. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do once you get it all disassembled and cleaned up, let me go ahead and move all this stuff out of the way. You need to uh, take your vial and just make sure it'll pass through here, right? See, it just slides right through easy. Uh, it can't be binding up on junk that's left in the side of there. If it doesn't go through easy, uh, get back inside of here. You know, there's probably just some little bit of junk that, uh, that didn't come out. Just got to make sure it's really good and clean. And then the next thing, I already made mine up, but get your paper and I, for mine it took uh, two layers of this stuff in particular or maybe you can get away with one or less I don't know and then uh, slide this in there 
and a pencil helps a lot. So now I've got that in there. And there's a couple of little dents in here that kind of seem to help register that. Uh, I'm quite a bit shorter than that, I think, but I don't know. Anyway. And then this vial should just fit right in there real nice. See? It slides in, but it doesn't fall out. Well, same as last words, right? Okay, so now we need to get ready to mix up our plaster. All right, so before you mix up your plaster, make sure this thing is lined up in the right. And again, you want to make sure it's sort of centered in, in this rotation, you know, where your graduation marks line up in the opening. And we look pretty good that way. And then also, you know, longitudinally, make sure it's set up that way. And when you put it in, you have kind of one last chance to sort of make sure everything's good. So I'll set this aside for just a second. Mix up this plaster here. There's the last chance. Get that lined up good. I think that looks good. All right, I'm going to go grab a Q-tip and clean up the ends of this tube real quick before it sets. Okay, well, it's been 24 hours and uh, this stuff is, uh, it's, at least it's solid. Uh, adding the flour to it really, really extended the curing time. But uh, this is solid enough now that I feel safe, uh, you know, bedding the other side here. So, I don't know if we can... We get a shot in there yeah you can kind of see get it lined up there's a little plug in there but it's kind of you know ran out a little bit but that's okay uh all the way around the glass on that side it's it's all bedded in so that, that's all we need it ain't gonna go nowhere so let's uh, get the old derms putty out and go back to mixing up some more It's the next day uh, again. So the, the plaster here is all set up now. Uh, I put a little bit less flour into the last mix. Uh, maybe a quarter of it was flour and 75% uh, of it was, was uh, a Durham's putty. Uh, that seemed to set a little bit faster. So anyway. <clears throat> The, uh, the next order of business here is we need to put the plugs into the carrier here. And simultaneously we need to put the, you know, the guard here on. And we need to put one of these little pieces of Teflon inside of this. And when this goes together, it's really important that uh, these ears, you know, they're flat. Uh, they need to be parallel to each other. So that's what I've got my poor man's surface plate here. This is just a piece of granite backsplash, but I've got that and a couple of, uh, you know, these are ground tool bits. They're pretty good in parallel and, you know, they're not rocking on here. So this should work good enough for this job. Uh, they recommend doing it on like one, two, three blocks on a surface plate, but, you know, not everybody has that. Certainly I don't. Anyway, so... The first step here, and we'll start with the, uh, one of them, you know, has that, that little dish spot for the hemispherical washer. We'll, uh, we'll start with the other side, and I don't think it really doesn't matter. <clears throat> I just want to try to eyeball it here a little bit, but I'm not going to put it in there far enough to really lock it up, you know. 
and then I'll just set this other one in here. And remember, we're not trying to seat this just yet. Uh, what I kind of want to try to do, I want this opening to be parallel with the ends of these things. And I really don't have a good recommendation on how you should do that. Except uh, just try to do it by eye. I suppose the level here. Let's see how level my table is. Yeah, I think that'll probably work all right. All right. And I can see that this one here wants to go in first. So, you know, it's going to go in easy. So remember, I, I got to get that one back out because I still got to put this thing on. So I'm just going to slip this side in. That one's bedded all the way down now. So I'm going to come over here, pull that one back out. And then the trick here is you got to hold this little piece in here. You kind of need three hands for this. And we're going to leave a little bit of a tail sticking out. Now those should just roll up inside of there. Uh, I don't really know why this one doesn't seem to want to work like that, but that is the way this one's going to have to go. All right, nice and snug. Now once I get down here, I'm just going to use a razor knife and trim that off. I wish I had a, a better way of doing this, but Okay, now we can push that guy in there all the way. All right, so now we need to put this on, and this dish shape needs to go down. And we'll just sort of start that in there. And, well, you can see I'm off a mile there. I'll kind of line it up. And I'm going to hold this down and push that on there. So see, I don't hear any ticking. There's no rocking here. So now we should be able to just push this home. All right. All right, I hope you found that helpful. In the next video, I'll show you how to mount it to the body and uh, calibrate the level. Uh, I've seen people ask how much it cost to have it sent off and done that you don't need to do that. You can do it right in your own shop. It's very easy. Anyway, if you enjoyed seeing this kind of content, why don't you click on the old horizontal mill and uh, please consider joining my Patreon.